everybody and welcome back to my channel. So by popular request I am going to do another sew along because you all seem to really really love it. So basically I'm going to make another Sapporo coat. I said um, in my haul video, my last video, um, that I wanted to make another one. So just to recap I'm going to show you the fabric and then I'm going to sew it together and you can watch me do it. <laughs> So the lining fabric I got um, was this cotton lining, um, it's just white with black speckles on it, um, that was from Minerva Crafts. And the main fabric is this gorgeous washable wool blend fabric, also from Minerva Crafts. Um, and this is just plain black because I wanted something quite classic and quite simple. Um, and I'm really really excited about using this because it seems like really thick and snuggly. Um, also this is washable so it's it was called something like washable wool blend coating fabric or something like that. Um, so I'm really excited to use this because I can put it in the wash as well if I need to. Um, so yeah, first thing I'm going to do is cut it out. Okay so because I've made this coat before I've actually already traced all my pieces onto tissue paper. Um, so I'm just going to cut out um, the lining pieces first and then um, the main fabric. There's not actually many pieces in this pattern, it's quite simple to put together. Um, so I've already traced them, I've already labelled them and I'm just going to cut all these out. So on the back piece of this coat, which is piece number three, you have to cut one on the folding fabric and one on the fold for the lining, but the lining does have a different edge. So I've labelled that, so for the lining piece I'm just going to fold under, um, but for the main fabric I'll have to remember to pull that up again. I just also realised that at the top of the same piece um, there is a fold there as well. Um, so the, where the neck piece is, um, the lining again is a bit smaller than the outer fabric. Same with piece four, the side back, you need to cut one pair of fabric, one pair of lining, um, but the lining um, again, I think that's the neck area. Yeah, I think that's the neck side. The lining is slightly smaller um, than the outer fabric. I just added all um, my notches and now I can cut the main fabric pieces. Alright, let's see if my rotary cutter can cut through this wool. Well, it's no harder to cut than other fabric. Okay, so pieces six and eight are the fusing pieces, um, and piece six also has to be cut out of fabric. Now, I don't do this first because I think if it's going to be fused, I can cut out the neck facing um, in one go by tracing it onto the fusing first and then ironing onto the the fusing to the fabric and then cutting out that fabric piece perfectly. So it means that I don't have any discrepancies in piece size or anything that needs to be trimmed down. It should be the exact same size. So I'm just going to trace these pieces, cut them out and then piece six, um, which has to be cut on the fold, um, will be ironed to the back of a piece of fabric for the neck. Okay, so there's my neck piece cut out of fusing, so I can just iron this onto the back of my fabric and then cut it out perfectly. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I've already made a mistake because I just started tracing out this on my fusing and obviously one side needs to be the reverse um, whereas I've just drawn around that side twice which is wrong so I'm going to cut out one of them and then draw around that on, on the reverse and then cut that out so they're mirror images. So when I look at the instructions, um, the first stage is to iron on some fusing strips um, to some of the main pieces. So piece eight that I've just um, made a mistake on and then um, cut out was this piece that goes on the side pieces. And then on the other pocket piece, I need to do one at the top and bottom. Um, that's piece six that I've done that I need to iron onto the fabric. Um, and I just need to strip across the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is get those pattern pieces out um, just these two, sorry, and then measure how long I need these strips to be and then I can just iron them on and then trim the ends um, at the angles that I need. Okay, so I fused all the bits that I need to now. Just make sure that when you're doing this, especially if like me, um, you've got a fabric that's the same on both sides, um, to make sure you put the fusing in mirror images of each one, otherwise you're gonna put them on the wrong side. Um, and I've done my neck facing uh, with the fusing on it as well. So, after the fusing, I need to join pin upper and lower front pieces together and stitch clip into the corners and press seams open either side of the pocket bag. So in the paper cut patterns um, little booklet that you make up it's really easy to follow because they put red for where you need to sew um, and the colour differences between like right size and wrong size whatever is really really clear. So I'm just gonna do the pin the upper and lower front pieces together um, like exactly like it says in here and then I'm going to stitch this pocket piece together. Okay so it's worth pointing out that the pieces won't lie flat so this one has a slight curve on it when you've pinned it. Um, it will sit flat once you've pinned it, but the rest of it won't sit flat because of the shape of the coat. Um, the pockets will lie flat together. Um, but as you can see here, if I lift this up, you'll see that that's a curve and that's what you join that to. You just got to manipulate it round. So it, it's not going to sit piece on top of piece flat. You've got to um, join it together and that's why you always pin it first. Okay, in the little paper booklet um, that you make up on the first things first page, it tells you that all seams have a one centimeter seam allowance included, um, unless otherwise stated. I'm actually going to do a um, 15 millimeter seam allowance, so 1.5 centimeter seam allowance, because my previous coat I felt just needed to be like a, like literally a minimal seams just like brought in. Um, so I'm hoping it won't make much difference, but we will find out. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more seam allowance so that my pieces come up to a tiny bit smaller. Okay, so once you've um, sewn this, these pieces together, you should end up with something like this. Obviously my seam allowance is a bit bigger and that has meant that these two pieces don't line, line up correctly, um, but I know that I can hide this um, difference in the lining when I join the lining piece on the inside. So I'm not too worried about that. But all I need to do now is um, you cut into the little corners here so that the pocket can sit flat. I'm gonna trim down my seam allowance um, just because it's slightly bigger than before and also I want to reduce the bulk. Um, luckily this fabric isn't free but in my on my last coat because it was an open weave I did in fact use my overlocker um, to finish all the edges off because otherwise I was worried that it was going to fall apart um, but on this one I don't have to so that will save me a bit of time so I just need to cut um, into the pocket either side and I'm just going to trim down the seam allowance. Ok 
Okay, so as per the instructions, um, I have pressed all the seams down, um, including the pocket so that this all lies flat, and you can see the shape of the coat taking place, really. Um, so next, um, I just need to get the back um, pieces and the sort of like shoulder pieces and join those two. Um, and then I join them at the seams and at the sides, so it's pretty easy. Just like um, before, I've joined, pinned the pieces together ready for sewing. This bit lies flat, but when you come to here, um, you join a curve to an under curve. Um, so you do have to manipulate that round slightly um, in the sides, but apart from that, it's pretty easy. Again, I'm going to sew this with a 15 mil seam allowance, because um, remember, I am adding a little bit extra. Um, and I'm also going to just trim the seam allowance down afterwards and press it away. Okay, so now I've done both of the side seams on the back. Um, so that's the neck there and these are where the sleeves are going to be attached to. So again, I've sewn mine with 15 centimeter, no, 15 millimeter seam allowance. Um, and I've trimmed um, the seams down and I've pressed them away towards the arms. Um, so now, according to the instructions, I just need to lay both front pieces um, on top one at a time and join them by the shoulders and the sides. So I'm just going to do that now. By the way, just a reminder that when I say I'm going to be sewing with 15 mil seam allowance, you need to do one centimetre seam allowance if that's what you're doing. Um, I just wanted to also point out that when you're putting pieces like this together, um, you'll notice that this piece matches up, but this is extra. Now, I know for some beginners, when you're doing new patterns like this, sometimes the pieces that don't match up, or if you're trying to join that to that, or you can't work out which piece is which, always just try and read ahead on the instructions first before you try and pin things and construct things, just so you get a rough idea of the basic construction of your garment before you've even begun to put it together. Because once you work out that this bit that's interface is going to become the inside and then that seam will then be joined to the lining, blah, 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 blah. It makes the construction of the garment a lot easier and a lot quicker because you know exactly where things have to be before it's even asked you. Because you can see that this is the front side, it's got the pocket, so this must be the bit that folds under. Um, simple things like that can really, really help, especially when you're just starting out. So always read ahead in the instructions and know what piece is which. So I've joined both sides now and the instructions call for both the side seam and the shoulder seam to be pressed open so I've done that as well um, and now what I need to do is make the sleeves and these are actually really really easy to do so as per the instructions you fold them right sides together and sew that line and you do that for all four um, sleeve pieces and then you put one inside the other and then you just sew it around the smaller hole So I'm going to do all four pieces now and that will make two sleeves and then I can just attach them onto the side Okay, so I've sewn all four sleeves up and I've just pressed um, the seams open. So now all you need to do is get two, turn one um, the right way out, and then you just place um, this inside the other, and then you sew up the smaller circle end, um, and then that will become the sleeve. And I think on my first coat, um, I also overlocked the larger circles together um, just to make it easy to sew onto the next bit. Um, and I might not overlock it, I might just sew it so that it's together just to make it a bit neater. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so don't do what I've just done. Um, 
basically you saw me pinning the smaller circle that I knew I had to sew and then I pinned the top but obviously you don't pin the top because you need to turn it around the right way before you sew before I've joined the bigger circles um so basically I did one and then I had to unpick it <laughs> because I couldn't turn it the right way so you sew the smaller circle first and then turn it the right way out like this matching the seams um, and then you can join the bigger circle together if you want to. I just find it's easier to keep it together. Um, so now I just need to join the sleeves to my coat. Um, also, I did only use a one centimetre seam allowance for this because I just wanted to give my sleeves a bit of extra length because I like the sleeves. Um, I like the length of the sleeves that I have on my coat at the moment. So I've gone back to a one centimetre seam allowance for this bit and I just did it quite close to the edge. No, probably just shy of a one centimetre, one centimetre seam allowance on this. So again, I'm going to use the same one centimetre seam allowance to join the larger circle to the armhole in my coat. So I'm just going to pin those together now and then attach them both on. Just so I explain this part a bit better, the seam on my sleeves I'm going to have under my arm. So you want that to be pinned to the underarm bit of your coat. So that's the first seam I'm going to line up um, and pin that in place because that's going to be an important line to keep straight. And then I can join the rest of it all the way around. So especially if, like me, you've got quite a thick um, wool type fabric, this is going to be quite a thick piece to sew because you're sewing through three layers. Um, so just take your time on the sewing machine with this bit and if you struggle, just try changing your needle so that it's a bit sharper because um, that will help. Okay, so basically this is how far I've got. I've attached one sleeve um, and the other one's got nothing on it. Um, but I'm going to have to stop it there for today because it's getting really, really late and I still have loads of work to do tonight so I don't want to keep making this in the dark when I know that I've got tons of stuff to do. So I'm going to treat this as part one and then I'm going to finish the rest and do it as a part two. So thank you for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it and I'm sorry it's not all in one go. Um, it's the busy time of year for me. Um, make sure you give it a thumbs up if you liked it and if you're excited for part two. And don't forget to comment below with any questions or any nice comments. Um, and if you aren't subscribed already, make sure you hit subscribe because that really, really helps me out. And I will see you early next week um, for part two of my Sephora Coke sew along. See you then. Happy handmade.